The Democratic Party of Oregon, based in Portland, is the official Oregon affiliate of the United States Democratic Party. It is recognized by the state of Oregon as a major political party, along with the Oregon Republican Party. The state central committee, made up of two delegates elected from each of Oregon's 36 counties and one additional delegate for every 15,000 registered Democrats, is the main authoritative body of the party. After Oregon was admitted into the Union in 1859, the Democratic Party controlled the state. Oregon elected twice as many Democrats as Republicans between 1859 and 1879 in statewide elections for governor, secretary of state, state treasurer, and congressman. The party holds 35 members in the state house that has 60 representatives total, and 18 members in the state senate, out of 30 delegates total. The party also holds the governor's office Kate Brown, Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum, Labor Commissioner Brad Avakian, and State Treasurer Ted Wheeler. The Democrats also have both U.S. Senate positions in their state and send four of the five U.S. House representatives from Oregon to D.C. Current membership As of February 2013, there were 868,395 registered Democrats in Oregon, compared to 680,878 registered Republicans, 495,330 registered non-affiliated voters, and 155,501 voters registered with other parties. Organization. As prescribed by Oregon state statutes governing major political parties, the party comprises all registered voters designating their party affiliation as Democrat. In each biennial primary election conducted in even numbered years, such affiliated voters elect members from each precinct to their respective county's central committee, which in turn elects delegates to a state convention, charged with organizing the party at the state level, and arranging for the day to day conduct of the party. These county central committees also send delegates to the standing committees of their respective congressional districts, which support their constituent county central committees and coordinate district-wide party activities and campaigns. Officers Chair, Jean Atkins First Vice Chair, Valdez Bravo Second Vice Chair, Lupita Maurer Secretary, Alex Josephi Treasurer, Eddie Morales DNC Member, Tanya Shively DNC Member, Travis Nelson DNC Member, Matt Keating Party caucuses The state party recognizes 15 party caucuses formed to address specific political issues in their constituent communities. Platform The party's 2010 platform outlines the following positions and policies. Health care The party supports a system that gives universal coverage to everyone in Oregon, a system that is not-for-profit. This would provide basic health care which contains medical, dental, vision, mental health care, addiction treatment, and preventative care by any licensed provider. It also wants to move to a single-payer health care system and move health care plans from a fee-for-service model to an evidence-based service model. It would allow importation and re-importation of Food and Drug Administration approved prescription drugs from other countries by individuals, businesses, and governments. Human rights The party wants to ban the death penalty in the state and holds a pro-choice view on reproductive health and abortion. The party also wishes to repeal the ban on same-sex marriages Oregon Ballot Measure 36 and allow same-sex couples the right to marry. Education The party would provide for all Oregon public education, restore lower tuition, and vital programs in public higher education. 
It would also fund and expand a federal and state scholarship grants so that all students from all backgrounds can attain a higher education. It supports a general fund revenue stream for higher education. Expand access to Internet services to promote flexible scheduling and specialized education. Election reform The party's platform includes calls to Require voter verified paper ballots for all federal elections Increase transparency and accountability for all contributions Amend the Constitution to prohibit all corporate financial contributions to political campaigns Asterisk. Provide public funds for campaigns at all levels Develop a federal fairness doctrine to counter bias in the media, and Supply the public with information on all candidates. <laughs> public safety The party's platform includes calls to Provide improved facilities for individuals with mental illness and reduce law enforcement contacts, incarcerations of those persons. Repeal all parts of the USA Patriot Act that infringe on constitutional rights. Provide additional law enforcement officer training to reduce incidents of excessive force. Repeal parts of No Child Left Behind specifically acts that allow military recruiters to have access to private information of students, and the military's ability to be in the school. Create a state. Bank of Oregon. Modeled on the State Bank of North Dakota. Pass a state-level Paid Family Leave Act. Oppose private prisons Permanently ban offshore oil drilling along the west coast, and Remove American military forces troops and bases from Iraq and Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> Current elected officials Members of Congress Of the seven delegates Oregon sends to the United States Congress, six of them are Democrats. U.S. <inaudible> <inaudible> Senate Since 2009, Democrats have held both of Oregon's seats in the U.S. Senate Class II, Jeff Merkley, Jr. Senator Class III, Ron Wyden, Sr. Senator U.S. House of Representatives Democrats hold four of the five seats Oregon is apportioned in the U.S. House of Representatives following the 2010 census. Statewide offices Democrats hold four of the five statewide elected offices in Oregon the Office of Secretary of State is held by Republican Dennis Richardson. Governor, Kate Brown. Attorney General, Ellen Rosenblum. Treasurer, Tobias Reed. Commissioner of Labor and Industries, Brad Avakian. This office is nonpartisan. <laughs> Oregon State Legislature President of the Senate, Peter Courtney Senate Majority Leader, Ginny Burdick Speaker of the House, Tina Kotek Speaker Pro Tempore, Paul Holvey House Majority Leader, Jennifer Williamson History Territorial period An initial call for a thorough and permanent Democratic Party organization in the Territory of Oregon was sounded by editor Asahel Bush in his Oregon Statesman in June 1851. The highly partisan Bush kept up a relentless drumbeat in his paper against Whig officials and party members, characterizing them as promoters of monopolies, tariffs, and bank charters, which fertilize the rich man's soil with the sweat of the poor man's brow. Bush's call was heeded on Independence Day, 1851, with the convocation of a territorial convention at which a central committee was chosen and James Nesmith was made chairman. The democracy 
of the pre-Civil War period was supported primarily by farmers, and featured a regular cycle of party activities during the agricultural slack time of winter through spring which included local caucuses, Jackson Jubilees, an annual Jefferson-Jackson dinner, county conventions, and Fourth of July bonfires. The anti-Democrats of the period, worse organized at the Democrats at the precinct, county, and territorial level, focused upon the issues of temperance and advancing Protestant nativism, marching into elections under three distinct political banners, the People's Party in 1853, the Whig and American Party in 1855, and the Republican, Independent, and Maine Law in 1857. Their comparatively superior system of party organization led to democratic dominance in the pre-statehood period, although factionalism revolving around control over federal appropriations and patronage left the Democratic Majority Party anything but a united organization. Early statehood period The party's first convention post-statehood was held in Salem on April 20, 1859. Bitterly divided over the issue of slavery, the convention nominated Lansing Stout, supported by pro-slavery factions led by Joseph Lane, for the United States House of Representatives over incumbent Democrat Lafayette Grover. Democratic control of the state legislature between 1859 and 1879 resulted in the selection of eight Democrats as U.S. Senators, and only three Republicans were chosen. Beginning in the 1880s the Democrats became the minority party when immigrants from Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota and foreign countries moving over to Oregon chose the Republican Party as their main party, with the start of the 1880s the Democrats had become the minority, and that stayed that way, for the most part, until the start of World War II. During those years however there were a few blips such as 1890 that had the Democrats back on the political map. The adoption of the direct primary gave the Democrats new forms of institutional democracy which lead the way for political advancement. The people of Oregon had a new way of thinking about politics and the Democrats started to use the reform-minded mentality that existed in some of the populace to overturn the Republican control of state politics. Topic. Democratic reform The Democrats first started to make alliances with third parties in the 1890s but then moved on to market themselves as a partisan organization. The governor at the time, Sylvester Penoyer, gathered a coalition with a start-up party called the Union Party and Independent Republicans from Portland. Penoyer won his re-election bid and this gave Democrats the confidence they were looking for to beat the Republicans, but the Republicans swept the rest of the state with the exception of a couple of seats in the state legislature. Penoyer warned both parties of a third party rising due to lack of acknowledgement of political problems that faced the nation. He was correct as the People's Party emerged in Omaha. Penoyer was agitated with the platforms of both parties that he left and joined the populists. This created a split in the party between people who wanted to follow Penoyer to the People's Party and the people who wanted to stay as Democrats. The refusal of the People's Party to join forces with the Democratic Party led to easy elections for Republicans in the years to come. In 1896 factionalism between these parties led the Republicans carrying Oregon in the presidential and congressional elections. State legislature elections resulted in the populist leading the Democrats in elected members 18-7. The only meaningful victory that the Democrats could look to was that of Sylvester Penoyer, who returned to the Democratic ticket and won the election for mayor, being supported by the Democrats and populists together. The only other Democratic success was that the people of Oregon responded to the call to reform as the Democrats took 12 counties from the Republicans in that presidential election. The Great Depression and the re-emergence of the Democrats Between 1900 and 1932 the Republicans enjoyed a 2-1 ratio over the Democrats, and sometimes 3-1. There was no real change even during the Franklin D. Roosevelt years where the Republican registration never dipped below 50% throughout the state. This remained the case until the boom in employment caused by World War II. This resulted in a drastic increase in Oregon population, which benefited the Democratic Party. Workers that came in provided a base to rebuild the Democratic Party. As the Great Depression struck the nation in the 1930s the Oregon Democrats saw this as an opportunity to gain prominence once again. 
The people of the state reacted very strongly against the Republican leadership that was in power during the economic collapse that sparked the Depression. Party officials believed that this collapse finally gave the party a concrete issue and they also believed that they would be able to make Oregon a two-party state once again. The state committee organized meetings between 1930 and 1932 to plan precinct reorganization throughout the state, and shortly after the spike in meetings, a «Young Democratic League» was formed with an active membership of 2,500 members and they were scattered throughout all of the counties of Oregon. This also ended the avoidance by candidates of the Democratic label as the public saw the Republicans as responsible for the collapse, so the Democrats put themselves out as the party of new ideas. They viewed the label of Democrat as an advantage, as the National Democratic Party saw a rise in popularity. As the Oregon Democrats ran in tandem with Roosevelt in the presidential election, they saw instant results. The Democrats gained 10 seats the state legislature, going from 7 to 17 and gaining majority in a 30-seat legislature, and in the state Senate going from 1 seat to 8, giving an even split in the state Senate. These were not the biggest successes for Oregon Democrats however, Charles H. Martin won re-election in the 3rd Congressional District and Walter Pierce won the 2nd Congressional District for the first time in Oregon history. In the 1930s, there was a drastic increase in voter registration for the Democrats, whose numbers rise from 30% of state registered voters to 48%. Most of this was because of support for FDR's New Deal. Roosevelt was solid in Oregon for his four election victories, never once losing the state, but the same could not be said for state Democrats. They were never able to win a Senate seat and after the initial Roosevelt election year, the state Democrats did not gain any more congressional seats that were significant. The fall of the Democrats The rise of the Democrats was short-lived during this period and the fall can be attributed to the gubernatorial election of former Congress member, Democrat Charles H. Martin. Martin ran and won the governorship as a champion of the New Deal brought to fruition by Roosevelt. After the election it became clear that Martin did not support the president or his New Deal, and this sparked a war between the Democratic state legislature and Martin. He received most of his troubles from the Democrats and gained support from Republicans. Martin was all but kicked out of the Democratic Party as many of his former supporters stated that they would no longer support him if he ran for governorship again. Despite this Martin declared that he would run again for governor because of promised support from Republicans. Martin lost his re-election bid in the primary to Democrat State Senator Henry Hess. This ended up splitting the party once again and Hess lost the general election for governor. Martin endorsed many Republicans that ran against incumbent Democrats, leading to the loss of majority in both the State House and Senate, plus the loss of the 3rd Congressional District. <laughs> Post-World War II rebuilding of the party After the war, there was no trace of a Democratic Party anywhere in Oregon, so a reorganization effort was started. The biggest triumph in the initial rebuilding was when Monroe Sweetland ran as a candidate for national committeeman, and then won the seat in the 1948 primaries. Sweetland sought to gain connections to the Harry S. Truman administration and eventually succeeded in his goal. This resulted in the now upstart Democratic presence in Oregon receiving monetary contributions from Democratic figures. This was the one real success in the 1948 election however as the Democrats in the state failed to come up with viable strong candidates for office. Once Sweetland saw this, he decided to launch strong campaigns for Truman in the state, that also was unsuccessful as Dewey carried the state, but not the presidency. They did however elect some Democrats to smaller positions in the state legislature. There was no apparent hope for the Democrats until the following election year 1950, when Democrats saw an increase and surpassing of Democratic registration over the Republicans. The 1950 election was as big a disaster as the 1948 election as the Democrats still won no prominent seats in the state, but in 1952 the Democrats ended up seizing the Attorney General position from the Republicans, which was seen as a major victory for the Democrats of the state. 1954 was the first time in a long time that Democrats had a sound hold on Oregon politics, they saw an increase in state legislature seats, increasing from 11 to 25 and in the Senate increasing from 4 to 6. 
They also won the first U.S. senatorial election in 40 years when Richard Neuberger defeated Republican incumbent Guy Corden, and Edith Green captured 3rd Congressional District in an open seat race against future Governor Tom McCall. Finally, in 1956 it was clear that the Democrats were back in power when they took three of four races for U.S. Representative, a re-election of the Attorney General, a gain of control over the state legislature, and a victory for Governor of Oregon. Recent elections <laughs> 2006 elections Going into the 2006 elections, Democrats occupied all four of the state's partisan executive offices and held a majority in the Oregon State Senate, but were in the minority in the Oregon House of Representatives. Of the statewide office holders, only Governor Ted Kulangoski was up for re-election, not only was he successful in that bid, but Democrats were elected to a slim majority in the House. All four of Oregon's Democratic United States House representatives were re-elected. 2008 elections In the 2008 elections, Democrats gained a three-fifths majority in the state house and maintained the same majority in the Senate despite losing a seat to the Republicans. This majority in both chambers of the Oregon Legislative Assembly is needed to pass bills that raise revenue, as required by Article 4 Section 25 of the state constitution. Democrats maintained control of all state partisan executive offices. They held all four of Oregon's five federal congressional seats, including a retiring Democrat's seat, and unseated Oregon's Republican senator, the only one from the West Coast and the only Republican occupying an office representing the whole of Oregon. 2010 elections In 2010 the Democrats kept the governorship in a close election decided by the slimmest of margins. Former two-term Governor John Kitzhaber defeated Republican Chris Dudley by a mere 14,910 votes. U.S. Senator Ron Wyden kept his Senate seat, handily beating Jim Huffman 57% to 39%. The Democratic Party of Oregon also kept all four of their previously held congressional seats in the U.S. House of Representatives. See also List of political parties in Oregon Topic Footnotes Topic Further reading Robert E. Burden, Democrats of Oregon, The Pattern of the Minority Politics, 1900 to 1956. Eugene, Oregon, University of Oregon Press, 1970 External links Democratic Party of Oregon <laughs>